Hey guys, in this one we're going to be manufacturing and installing a dental implant bridge. Here's an x-ray that we took of a patient with numerous edentulous areas. We made a plan to restore all three quadrants with dental implant bridges, and in this video we're going to be going over the entire process from start to finish of the manufacturing and installation of a dental implant bridge in the lower right quadrant. Going to get started with the clinical footage by removing our healing caps, and these are metal caps that screw into the implant during the healing period. When we place dental implants into the jawbone, we typically wait a period of time for the area to heal and the implants to fuse to the jawbone before we install the teeth on top. And these healing caps act as placeholders in the meantime. We're also going to use this special device that's going to measure the stability of the implants using magnetic resonance. And so we screw these little metal pegs into the implant and hold our magnetic resonance device up to the peg. And then we get a number that indicates to us the stability of the implant in this case, we got 70 by 70 on the first implant and 72 by 72 on the second implant. And these stability values are well within the range to restore these dental implants with a bridge. Before we can design and manufacture our implant bridge, we need to take a 3D optical scan of the jaw with the implants in it. So we're going to screw in these scan posts into the implants, which are indicators that show the scanner the orientation and angulation of the dental implants in the jawbone. This is our scanner, which has a very precise camera in it that takes multiple images every second. And as the scanner moves around, very sophisticated software is able to patch together the 2D images into a 3D model. It normally takes a couple thousand images patched together by the software to make a model of each jaw aligned together in the way that the patient bites down. We're going to replace the healing caps, send the patient home, and then begin the bridge design process. And here's what the scan output looks like, and you can see in living color the entire intraoral situation with the implant scan bodies that are meant to indicate to the computer-assisted design software exactly where the implants are located so that the bridge can be designed with a precise fit. I send the scan to my designer who designs the shape of the bridge and then sends me back the file that I will use to manufacture the bridge itself with my CNC machine. I will begin the manufacturing process by importing the bridge file into my milling software and nesting it digitally in a block of zirconia, which is a dental ceramic material that the milling machine will then mill the part out of the block in its green state, which is a chalky white material. Here's what the zirconia block looks like after the milling machine has milled the parts as it was instructed by the computer software. And here's a macro photo of our bridge alongside some other cases that we did that week. We're then gonna cut the bridge out of the block of zirconia with a lab hand piece and then smooth off the sprues or the stalks that attach the part to the zirconia block to prevent it from falling out during milling. And once we have smoothed off our part, we're gonna place it in a sintering tray, uh, which we are going to put in a furnace to bake overnight for about eight hours at 1500 degrees Celsius. After the parts have been baked, they will shrink and densify greatly and also turn color into a tooth looking shade. We'll then polish the bridge and attach these little metal adapters that connect the bridge to the dental implants themselves by way of a tiny fixation screw. And once we have completed the process to this point, we are now ready to install the bridge onto the dental implants. So we will get the patient back the following week after taking our scan and remove the healing caps rinse and dry the area, and then begin installing the bridge over top of the implants. And we're gonna place the bridge on top and then tighten the screws down with finger tightness using this little finger driver. And then we will torque the bridge down further with this mini torque wrench. And I'll adjust the torque level to about 15 Newton centimeters and torque the implant bridge down to this torque level before adjusting the torque wrench to the spec value of 35 Newton centimeters, and then torquing the bridge down fully. I'll have the patient bite down on a cotton roll to ensure that the bridge is fully sat before going in and torquing the bridge once more down to spec. We will also check that the bite is comfortable with this articulating paper, and I normally like to leave my implant restorations just a hair out of the bite since they have no give to them like natural teeth. And we're also going to check the contact between the bridge and its neighboring tooth. And we like to see some resistance when we floss up and down, because if there is an open gap here, then food will get lodged in this space and cause gum inflammation. Once the bridge is fully installed and we're happy with the contacts and the bite, 
We're going to plug up the screw channels by first packing in some Teflon tape over the screw head with this little plugger. And then backfilling the rest of the screw channel with a restorative dental material. And we'll overfill the screw channels, pack down the material, and then cut away the excess material so that it is flush with the level of the screw channel before applying a varnish agent so that the filling material feels smooth to the tongue. And that is a how we manufacture and install a dental implant bridge.